In this video, I will be adding the power usage bar from the first game. I show two methods, progress bar and images like the one showcased in this video. To start, find your user interface for where you have the power UI. I just kept it all under the clock widget. In this widget, we need to add a horizontal box to keep our text and images on one line. Remember to place it in the vertical box. Add a text block to the horizontal box. I change the text to usage. Change the font and color as you wish. I also decided to add another horizontal box inside of this one. Search for an image and drag it into the horizontal box to act as the power level. I gave it a padding out of design choice. Set it to fill so it fills the box. Change the color to a green color. I am doing it similar to the first game. You can duplicate the image multiple times onto your horizontal box. Change the names of these images to their power level as we need these later on to set their visibility. I change the colors of the next few images to yellow and red. Once the images are done, go to your event graph and we will create a function call update power bars which is the only function we need. This will use a basic setup. First add an input. A float value called power usage which I change later on. The method is just check what power usage we are at and just checking which images should be visible or hidden. Add a branch. Also get your power usage input, I like to search it up. Get a greater than symbol and hook it to your branch. This value goes from the minimum and maximum values from the power system in your game mode. You can check what values you set here. In your checker, I start with 4 and this is when I realized the input could be confusing. I changed the input to power delay since this is the seconds it takes for a value to decrease. Make sure to update your input to the right one. Get your images, I am only changing 3 images as in FunNAF 1, the first bar is always on. Drag from one of them and do a set visibility. Make it hidden. Now this is for if delay is greater than 4 seconds, so the bars will be hidden. Now copy and paste the branch. This delay will be for the second level bar, so I think if the delay was 3 seconds. Copy and paste it again. Except find your level 2 image and break the link between the image and the set visibility. Get another set visibility. This one connects to the level 2 image and set it to visible. Next. We select this whole section from the branch and set visibility. We copy it and paste it below and connect it to the false. This value is going to be 2. For true, we want to now add the next image onto the screen which is the yellow image, level 3. Next, for our false, we can do the opposite of the first one. Copy and paste it and delete one of the set visibilities. All three images should be visible on false. Compile and save. Now to update this function. Go to your game mode or wherever your power system is. Find your delay rate maths where you set the delay rate value. I will delete this print string as it's not necessary now. Get your player pawn and get a reference to the player widget. Get the widget that has your power code, I put mine in the clock widget. Call the update power bar function. Find the delay rate variable that you set before this player widget and connect it to the function. Now test, I did forget one thing, but it does seem to work. Back in your widget, select the three images and in your details panel, find the visibility selection and set it to hidden. Test it again and it should work as expected. You are pretty much done but I do want to make another variation with progress bars instead of images. Go back to your widget class and instead of deleting all the images, I am just going to add a progress bar below it and make it a good size. I am going to make it simple with progress bar colors but you could make a gradient material. Name it power usage progress bar. In your graph, break the link here. We won't be using this code for this part of the tutorial so I place it a bit far away. I won't delete it as I want to use the first method for my project. Now get your progress bar and do a set percent. Now with delays, 
I can't plug it straight in since the values don't match. I can remap the values. Using this map range clamp node, we can convert the delay to fit the progress bar values of 0 to 1. Google this node for more information. Outrange A will be 1 as it will be going in reverse. Also B will be 0.1 as I don't want the bar to be empty. I will be setting color of progress bar here too. We can use a lerp linear color. The A will be a green and you can set B to be the red color. Alpha also gets connected to the map node. Test the game, there is one problem immediately. The progress bar is empty at the start but the rest works. In your code, I am going to just promote this out range B to be a variable. Right click and click promote to variable. I will call it start percent. Make sure the default value is 0.1. On your event graph, search for pre-construct. Get the progress bar and do a set percent. The start percent variable will hook into this set percent input. Compile and go to your designer view and you should see the percentage bar works. The color doesn't change here since I never added that to the pre-construct event. Now test the game and this method should work. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and sharing. See you next time.